إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verily all praise and thanks are due to Allah. And may the peace and bless of Allah be upon His final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verily, whomsoever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped, and that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is His final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be God conscious of your Lord to the best of your ability. And make sure that you die not except in a state of submission, in a state of obedience, in a state of sincere devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, Allah blessed us with another opportunity to witness the month of Dhul Hijjah. And this is the month which consists of another opportunity for Allah's servants. Another opportunity for Allah's servants' dua to be accepted. Another opportunity for Allah's servant is, is, is istighfar to be also accepted. Another opportunity for Allah's servant to fulfill some of his obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For liman alayhi sabil, whoever is able to take that uh, trip. But the reality is the wisdom of the Prophet sallallahu in his advice keeps us aware and keeps us on point that yes, live in this life as, you, as if you're going to live in it forever, right? Be in this life as if you're going to live in it forever. But also work for the hereafter as if you're going to die tomorrow. So you keep a balance between both deen, right, dunya, wa akhira. You keep a balance between both. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kun fi dunya, be in this life. Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharib. Be in this life as if you were a stranger. Be in this life as if you were a stranger. Aw, abir is sabil. Or a wafer. Or a wafer. <clears throat> a traveler. So, this life for us should be a transition. A transition towards meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A transition towards the akhirah. It shouldn't be disconnected. It shouldn't be the dunya is the end. The dunya is the means towards the akhirah. We use the dunya for the akhirah. And if we misuse it, we spoil our akhirah. We spoil, spoil the results. So the journey, this journey and this dunya eventually comes to an end. This journey of this dunya eventually comes to an end. And now we ask ourselves, did we make the most of it? Did I worship Allah with as much or even more devotion than I spent with my profession? Did I think about Allah and about the worship of Allah the same way, the same amount of time that I spent thinking about what am I going to earn tomorrow when Allah says that He is the one that knows what you will earn tomorrow? Right? He is the one that knows. And then to, to keep us aware, 
He knows what's in your heart. You, we can display our religiosity, but Allah knows what revolves within the heart. Allah knows how close we are to Him, how close are our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Surah Al-Duha, وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَىٰ and the hereafter is better for you than, the, than this life. So brothers and sisters, in this note, we take a glimpse at Hajj. And Hajj has two dimensions. The physical dimension, the rituals, but also the inner dimension. If we just do the ritual and miss the inner benefits, then we might come back in the same state. So the physical hajj deals with ihram, the stripping away of what? The stripping away of your of your Calvin Klein shirts and your polo shirts and your, right? The stripping away of your Rolex watch and your Tag Euro watch. The stripping away of, of all these things that we dress ourselves with to two plain towels. Not even the towels that we try to choose in Walmart or <laughs> like those nice Co cozy towels, it's just a towel with no stitches, just very simple, We're not stitched so it won't distinguish between me and my brother. So the poor person doesn't have to say, I am better than this rich person because I have a better towel, or vice versa. But we're all equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we begin to think, it is a, a shock to our mind that we're getting rid of all these things, and now you're thinking, now you're thinking, where am I going to put my, my watch and my shirt and my pants? Where am I going to put it? You can't take it with you in, in, during the Hajj, when you're performing the, the manasseh, right? When you're, doing, when you're in the state of Ihram, what use, is, what use does, does it have for you? Then you realize that there is something of greater importance, which is taqwa which is closeness to Allah, which is taqarrub ila Allah, which is getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hoping that He is pleased with us. So, so when you go into <clears throat> the other step <clears throat> is you go and see the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You go and see the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's no tahiyat al-masjid, right? You go inside right away, you think you're going to have to make tahiyat al-masjid, but you don't have to because the tawaf is salat. But if the salat al-fard is taking place, then you join the salat, right? If the salat al-fard is taking place, you join the salat. You don't go and make tawaf, you, go, you, you join the obligatory fard, salat. So tawaf around the Kaaba seven times, right? And we look at the Hajar al-Aswad, and we try to kiss it. Like Umar al-Khattab said, <clears throat> I know that you're just a stone. And if it wasn't because Rasulullah kissed you, I would not have kissed you. Sometimes we worship these things. We worship the door and we worship the rock and we worship the Maqam Ibrahim and we forget the inner meaning of it. That it was that Ibrahim salam stood there and looked at the Kaaba and did what? Did he touch his own footsteps? He didn't. He made dua. So sometimes we miss the inner benefit for these physical things because we're so accustomed to the physical things. 
the Prophet Sallallahu said in, 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 in the Hajj al wada that the blood of a believer is holier than the, than the Kaaba. Now, how do we deal with each other? Right? How do we deal with each other? But the tawaf around the Kaaba helps us remember, helps us remember the, the foundation of it. Ibrahim alayhi salam. It connects us with Ibrahim alayhi salam. It connects us with Ismail alayhi salam. Then proceeding from the Kaaba, I'm not going to go through all the steps, OK? I'm going to just go, they, let's say Sa'i. I'm going to the Arkan al-Hajj, right? The pillars of Hajj, Sa'i. We go to uh, Sa'i, you go seven times. OK, you do it, you get tired, you do it, but what is the importance of it? We think about the story behind this place, the story of sacrifice where Ibrahim salam, left Hajar and baby Ismail with a little bit of food and drink, and then they finished. And now the mother is looking for food for the son. But let's go back and see the iman of this mother. When she saw Ibrahim salam, walking away, and she said, oh, Ibrahim, did your Lord instruct you? And he said, yes. And she responded, and our Lord will never abandon us. That's the iman of this mother who's being left in the desert. No Walmart, no, no, none of these things that we have now. Just with that food, drink, and another. Part, item, another item. Tawakkul ala Allah. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa man yatawakkul ala Allah fa huwa hasbuh. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, he will suffice him. Right? This was there too. So now, after the sa'i, after the sa'i, the hujjaj, they go to Mina. And they call it Yom Tarweeh, which is the day of rest, right, of, of, of relaxation. And this, this is the prelude. This is the introduction to Hajj. So you're still in there thinking, preparing yourself mentally, physically, to go to the main event in Hajj, Yom Arafah. So you're preparing. Now when you go to Arafah, the historical significance, we know that the Prophet ﷺ gave his last, <coughs> his farewell address, his farewell sermon in Arafah. And if we, we listen and we read and we study that farewell sermon, we come to a realization that the Prophet ﷺ informed us of priorities. The rights of Allah, our, our relationship with Allah, the rights of our brothers, our relationship with each other. Right? So it's a relationship. So now, <clears throat> The Prophet ﷺ himself said, Al-Hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. And if Arafah is missing, then the Hajj is incomplete. Hajj is Arafah. But when we think about it, what is Arafah and what is the root word of Arafah? It comes from the same word as uh, as the same root as ta'rif, ta'aruf, right? Arafa. Because there, all of the hujjaj gather in one plane, in one area, 
to do the same thing and they have some time to also get to know each other. Meet people from all over the world, Muslims, brothers, who maybe made dua for us, right? Brothers from different parts of the world. May Allah bless our brothers and sisters in, in, in America, right? There's brothers, there's always good brothers that we do not know might be making dua for us. And vice versa, how many times we make dua here for our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world? This is, bro this is brotherhood and sisterhood. Remembering your brothers and sisters <coughs> in their presence and their absence. So in Arafah, in Tawaf, in, uh, after Iran we make dua. In Tawaf we make dua. In Mina we make dua. In Arafah we make a lot of dua. And Allah blesses his servants in Arafah with qubul, acceptance, with maghfirah, uh, with forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ghafoorul rahim. Right, the one who is ready for his servant to ask and for him to answer. So now, in Arafah, we reached the peak. We made dua. Right? We reached the peak. We're there, and now we feel strong because we, we made tawbah, we repented, we sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we made dua, but now we're going to Muzdalifah. And Muzdalifah gives us a reality, a, a realization that, the realization of what the dunya is. That yes, you can make tawbah and you can make istighfar, but Shaitan is still ready to distract you, right? So in Muzdalifah, we go and we get some stones to symbolically, right, stone the Shaitan wherever he appeared to Ibrahim salam, when Ibrahim salam was going to obey Allah and sacrifice his son, right? So subhanAllah, so we go and it teaches us that this is the dunya. The dunya is a test. And shaitan is waiting for us. He said he will come from the right, from the left, from in front, from behind, from above, from beneath, from everywhere, or every angle. He will come to us. So this is taking the means. What are the tools to deflect shaitan? Dhikr. Iman. Amal. Helping one another. Wal asr, inna linsana la fi khusr. Allah swear by the time that verily mankind is in loss. Illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. Except those who believe and work righteousness. Wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. And those who help one another in, 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 the, in the truth and help one another in patience. At ta'awun al birri wa taqwa. Helping one another in righteousness and God consciousness. So, brothers and sisters, the entire Hajj focuses on a relationship. A relationship between the servant and his Lord. A relationship between the mother and a child, Hajar and Ismail. A relationship between the child and his father, Ibrahim salam and Ismail. In different circumstances, in the time of sacrifice and also in the time of building or of raising the foundation of the Kaaba. So, and also the relationship between a family and its Lord. The relationship between a family and its Lord. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ad-Deen Mu'amalat. This Deen is interpersonal relationships. Interpersonal relations. Dealings. Dealings with one another. 
There's a moment in Jummah when the du'as accept and aqulu qali hadha wa astaghfirli wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu inna huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala shaf al-mursaleen wa ala ahli wa sahbi ajma'in. All praise and thanks are due to Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and all those who follow him until their judgment. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, now speaking to the geographical context, because this address or preparation maybe should have been said in one of the miqats, getting ready for us in Haram going to Hajj. Now the question is, the business question, right? What is in it for me? Right, they're going to Hajj, but we're here. How can I benefit? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear, wal fajr wa layalin ash. Allah swear by the fajr and the ten nights. The ten nights, the ten days of, of Dhul Hijjah. So Allah swears by the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, as Ibn Abbas also said, <coughs> that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامِ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحٌ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِيهِنَّ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ There is no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than in these days. SubhanAllah. So in these days, in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, so increase, if you look at the Al-Amal Al-Salih, has a vast meaning, from dhikr to salah, fulfilling your obligations, to uh, also uh, fasting, to sacrifice, the Prophet ﷺ also said, dhikr, when he said, so during these times, recite of great deal of tahleel, takbir, tahmeed. Tahleel, saying, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Takbir, saying, Allahu Akbar. Tahmeed, saying, alhamdulillah. So we should get busy during these days every day. Saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Getting busy with the dhikr. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. In your car, going to work, going home, making sure that every day is, is filled with dhikr. <coughs> also the Prophet ﷺ, Advise us to fast in the day of Arafah for those that are not present, for those that are not making Hajj, to fast in the day of Arafat. <clears throat> and then we also, in these days, we have the sacrificial sacrifice, which is the conclusion. Now, as a reminder, as a reminder, the Prophet ﷺ said that if one intends to sacrifice, then let him not do the, the acts of fitrah, which is the cutting of the nails and the cutting of the hair and the, until he sacrifices. So we have a part to do in, while we're here. We have an opportunity to engage in a lot of worship and make Allah of du'a. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us next year with being, with performing hajj. Some of us have the ability to go to hajj, but we make the conscious decision not to go. While others have the desire, but there's some roadblock preventing them from going. 
And that's a fact. That's a fact. They might have the opportunity even. They might have the opportunity. But maybe there's some obstacle preventing them from going. So brothers and sisters, in these days, make sure that you make your moments count. Invest in your moments. Invest in yourself. The same way you look at these two aspects of physical, in the physical, you should know what, you, what, what you're required to do, right? The kaifiya, salah, how to make the salah, how did the prophet pray, right? How did the prophet perform hajj, the physical, but also the spiritual. What was the mindset? So when you come to salah, come with that mindset. Have that spiritual presence. That you're coming, and when you make that beer, Allah is looking at you. So you're going to stand the way the Prophet ﷺ told you to stand. And you're going to recite the Qur'an to please Allah. And listen to its meaning. And you're going to make ruku to say, Subhanallah al-Azim. Right? To say, glorify is Allah the Great. And then you make sujood, subhanahu rabbil ala. Right? You glorify Allah the Most High. And in between those moments, make thicker, make istighfar. Always keep the presence of Allah, not only in the masjid, but in your car in your homes, in your bedrooms, in your living rooms, in your kitchen. All those places in your home can be used for worship. <coughs> when you go to the living room and sit down, you say, Bismillah, you sit down. Dhikr. When you go in the kitchen and, you're going, and, and your wife is going to cook for you, or you're going to cook for your wife, because some brothers know how to cook, mashallah. Right? You say, Bismillah, put barakah in that food. When you go to the room, Bismillah, you're going to rest. Brothers and sisters, please make the most out of these days. This is a reminder to myself and to you. Allahumma dina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barik lana fi man aatayt, wa qina shara ma qadayt, fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. إنه لا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عديت تباركت ربنا تعليت <تصفيق> اللهم اشف مرضى ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اصلح حال المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم اصلح حال المسلمين في كل مكان يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب والأبصار صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم إننا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اهله وصحبه اجمعين واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين اقم الصلاه استغفر ان الصلاه تنهى النفوس